Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Marine Archaeology at Florida Keys Community College. A bold new program of both cultural and historical significance. The dream has become a reality. No longer will the shipwrecks of the Florida Keys be restricted to a small cadre of PhD scientists. Through the pioneering efforts of Mel Fisher, the Atlantic Alliance for Maritime Heritage Conservation, the Naval Air Defense Command, and educators at Florida Keys Community College, you are about to witness the raising of a treasure more valuable than gold and silver could ever be. Here we see the crew members from the treasure salver vessel, J.B. Magruder, assisting in the four-point anchorage of the mechanized landing ship on location at the Neustra Senora de la Tosha wreck site, 35 miles west of the island city of Key West. Steel cables are carefully paid out by the crew to position the ship for timber location and lift operations. The BBC camera crew is standing by. Current and wave conditions are optimal as the General Offshore Corporation crane operator prepares the cradle for descent. The divers are in the water both at the surface and on the bottom as the cradle is lowered. Communication between the ship and the divers below is accomplished by a series of tugs on the rope by the surface signalmen. The crew of the Virgilona moves in for a closer view. Let's tune in on the action as the first timber surfaces after having lain on the bottom for more than 365 years. Here as divers from treasure salvers and personnel from Florida Keys Community College move timbers aboard, we see Bill Muir, ship historian since 1980, carefully cataloging the scarf joints of the timbers as they come aboard. Let's go now to Marine Archaeology Coordinator William Trantham at Florida Keys Community College interviewing Duncan Matheson, instructor in the program. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a momentous occasion today. The uh, first timbers uh, from the Atosha have come aboard the ship, and uh, these timbers are going to be placed in our scuba training area at Florida Keys Community College, where we're going to begin a pilot program in marine archaeology, the first of its kind at a community college, and certainly uh, something which we're sure will draw many, many students. And uh, Duncan, who is the chief archaeologist for treasure salvers, is going to teach two one-hour workshops in marine archaeology uh, in May. And uh, Duncan, tell us about those. Well, this will be a very good opportunity to introduce to a lot of students the basics of shipwreck archaeology. Why we map and measure shipwreck artifacts, how we recover timbers, and a lot about how we can preserve our maritime heritage along the Florida Keys. I noticed that these, these timbers have numbers on them, and uh, they have been uh, literally pieced together. We have some over here that right. uh, actually fit. Uh, what was that process and how did that uh, well, help our, you? Our team has worked very hard to map and measure all the timbers in position before we recovered them. And each timber has been numbered to enable us now to piece them together. And uh, a number of people have been doing a lot of work. John Dorwin, Bill Muir, David Moore, a whole bunch of us working together to be sure we get all the information. And today, we're beginning the timber recovery. We're very pleased at that because Bill Muir and David Moore will lead the timber study so that we can reconstruct the lines of the vessel. We will 
more about Greek and Roman ships than we know about Spanish galleons. And this is going to make the Florida Keys Community College program very unique, because over the next couple of years, we'll be able to involve students in some really exciting ongoing research. Here we see a beautiful aerial view of our campus with the Nuestra Senora de la Tosha underwater training area, which is L-shaped here. You can see the deep water. We're going to go down to the surface now and actually see the uh, crew from Treasure Salvers and educators at Florida Keys Community College placing these timbers in our training facility. We see a beautiful view coming up of our main building and we're going to now listen to the president of Florida Keys Community College, Dr. William Seeker, talking about this educational program. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here in, at Florida Keys Community College in Key West, and uh, I'm talking with Dr. Bill Seeker, who's the president of the college. And uh, Dr. Seeker, tell us about the new program that uh, you're offering at Florida Keys Community College. Well, right out here in front of us is some of the clearest, warmest waters in the world, and we're going to have a marine archaeology program where students, uh, starting in January of 1987 can come right out of here and dive on the remains of the Atosha, which was recently the structure of the Atosha was put right out here in the backyard of our campus and will be an excellent area for our introduction to marine archaeology and this is what we're all pleased about. Well, it sure does sound like a very exciting program. Uh, Bill Trantham, Campus America, Florida Keys Community College, Key West. Here we see Army Corps of Engineers divers in the training program under the able direction of Bob Smith, Director of Underwater Activities. Let's listen now as Duncan Matheson, our marine archaeologist, talks about the training program with the people involved. All right, now this grid gives you a, a permanent camping frame of reference. And, and your task is to swim this out place it over the main pile of difference. Now at this point the Army Corps divers have been divided into two groups. One group uh, is going to swim the large grid out and place it on the wreck site. The other group is undergoing uh, training with Duncan Matheson on the beach as an NBC affiliate uh, stands by uh, photographing the activities. Let's go to Duncan and uh, hear what he's talking about with a group on the beach. Long crescent. Okay. Okay, what you can do is this. They're gonna this group is gonna be setting up a datum. The datum point of course is the zero point. That's where you begin all your measurements. Right? You you should do the same thing. You should set up a point off to one side. You can maybe one of those uh, Rebars, or one of those trailer tie downs, and push down on the bottom. And that's your data. And you simply, what you do is you get your, your tape measure and you measure in from your beginning point to say the corner of that grid. That says, say it's five feet. And with your compass, you get direction. So with direction and distance, you position this and then you, you determine whether or not it's, it's laying north, south, or east, west. See how that works? And if this is north, what's that corner? The, they're the long timbers that cover the outside of the hull. We got the floors, they're the big thick timbers right at the bottom of the ship. Then we got what? The ceiling. These are very thin, but wide timbers. You see a thin, wide timber, you know you're looking at a ceiling timber, and that represented the bottom of the cargo orlop deck where all that treasure was piled up. That other one is. <laughs> a, a bit larger thing. But this one you're probably going to have to flip it completely under the water. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got me a booby today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, We're now going to go down onto the actual wreck site, uh, which has been reestablished at Florida Keys Community College. The conditions are very similar to the original wreck site, 35 miles west of Key West. We have transported these timbers to a anoxic condition where they will be preserved for all to see and learn about in this bold new educational program. You can see that uh, the growth of marine organisms on the grids is quite substantial. However, the timbers themselves are in an area where oxygen 
completed so that uh, the worms that would normally burrow into the timbers are unable to survive. We see Duncan here in a head down position which is the appropriate position for working on the timbers. Uh, by keeping the flippers up above this prevents siltation and visibility is maintained. By using the grids we can determine a three-dimensional uh, reference for repositioning the timbers in the original position they were in on the original rec site. This provides an opportunity for both divers and snorkelers to study timbers of a Spanish galleon over 365 years old. Tremendous amount of interest has been developed because of this unique training facility, the only one of its kind in the continental United States, perhaps the only one of its kind in the world. The Florida Keys represents the shipwreck capital of the United States, a resource which indeed provides an educational opportunity unparalleled. We're now going to go to John McGarry, the executive director of the Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Society, talking about the kinds of activities that students in our marine archaeology workshops will be involved in. We'll then talk with Jim Sinclair, who is an adjunct in our marine archaeology training program. Both of these gentlemen have provided a tremendous amount of worthwhile information to our community college students. The underwater training facility that we see here is unique in many, many aspects. We see marine life forms, for example, that are quite interesting. The upside down jellyfish, which uh, resides in our diving area, which is 38 feet deep. Let's now go to the other uh, educators in our program and hear John McGarry and Jim Sinclair. Right now we're in the conservation laboratory of our museum located here in Key West. I'm very pleased that the society is going to be involved in these upcoming workshops. I have here in front of me a variety of artifacts from the uh, ships that have been recovered in the western Sonora de Atocha and the Santa Margarita, as well as some other ships that the Society is working on. These materials will give the students and the interns in the program an opportunity in a wide range of uh, museum skills, including conservation, uh, curation, uh, cataloging, just about every facet of museum work. The objects that are being conserved in this particular tank are called archivists. These are old type guns that were found off of the Santa Margarita and the Western Senora de Atocha. Um, after the conservation process is complete, they must be cataloged and ascensioned into the collection of the Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Society. Workshop participants will be able to study firsthand these objects that have been under the sea for 368 years. The cards that I'm holding in my hand are part of a large inventory of material. These were items that were recovered in 1986 from the Nuestra Senora de Atocha. Learning how to keep proper curatorial records is one of the requisite pieces of knowledge that the workshop attendants will have to learn. Um, doing some technical drawing um, is uh, not mandatory, but it certainly helps. And, uh, and, and learning a little bit about how to take good archaeological pictures will all be covered in the workshop. Seafarers Nautique is a new nautical shop helping to coordinate the lifelong learning program at Florida Keys Community College by developing lines of communication with the dive industry. This process is being facilitated by informal lectures and slide programs which focus on marine archaeology. Here we see a student coming into the shop and looking at a brochure which describes the program at Florida Keys Community College. And like her, many other people in the Florida Keys are becoming interested in this vast natural resource, this cultural and historical resource that's being made available. So join us and learn about marine archaeology.